Hi everyone, it's LJ from Purico and today's video is on uh, decoupage with the iron-on method. So again, obviously using all um, Purico products and I've started um, doing the drawers a bit like I did last week. But first I want to show you, um, after I finished last week's video, I decided I'd have a go at decoupaging the handles. So I thought I would show you how it turned out. I might just come around so I'm a bit closer to the camera. So, uh, can you see that? So I wrapped it around the piece, a square of paper, wrapped it around, and then we put a hair tie um, around sort of that section there. Oh, can't see here. So we put a hair tie around this section here. And then I, the rest of the tail of the paper, I just twisted around the screw. So, and it's dried pretty well. Um, it was a bit bulky around this part here. So what I did is I sanded it smooth and um, painted over it and then distressed it a little bit. So I don't know if you can see in the light, but it doesn't look too bad. Sorry, I'm trying to do three different cameras at once here. So yeah, it doesn't do too bad. Hi Mon, how you going? Um, so this was last week's project. This is Bluebell. Um, I've got black wax on it. And this, tran uh, not transfer paper, this decoupage paper is a recycled um, brand and it's called Blueprint. So we're using another one of their papers today as well. But I thought I would just show you, this is the other knob and I just painted this one and put our satin, no, I think eggshell um, on that um, knob. So I can't decide which one I like better. So you guys might have to help me out today in the video and see what you think and which one you like the best. I think I'm liking the decoupaged one, but you know, we'll see. One day I'll get the thing finished. <laughs> always doing a hundred things at once. So today's paper we're using is called um, Queen Bee. So it's got some really nice pinks in it. Uh, and I'll open it up so you can have a look at the whole um, paper. It's actually really cute. It's got some uh, vintage script on it as well. Oh yeah, everyone else is saying they like the decoupage knobs Yay! better too. So I'll ha I maybe should do a little video on how I actually did it um, rather than explaining because sometimes I could explain how to drink water and you just still wouldn't know how to do it. Okay, let's open this up. Okay, so that is the Queen Bee paper. It's super cute. I love, love, love the little bee with the crown. It's so cute. I'll try and hold it a bit closer so you can possibly see it's super cute so that's what I'm going to do doing on these draw fronts today and today um, we're also doing I'll show you um, four of the new colors so our neutrals that we've already shown you photos of this morning on our um, Instagram and Facebook page so we've got those to look forward to and also the colour I'm using today is, don't tell anyone, Protea. So this is our newest pink. So this one you'll see photos of on um, at 12 o'clock. I'll show it a bit closer. So that's the pink I'm using today. I don't know if you can see. It looks so different on the two screens I'm looking at. It's hilarious. Um, but that's our newest pink called Protea. So no one else has seen that yet. So you're getting a little sneaky peeky. And what I've also done here as well, I'm not sure if it's going to show up, but I've started painting these drawers. This one here has got just one coat of the Protea silk finish and it's just straight over a sanded um, substrate 
And then this one is sanded, primed, and then one coat of the silk. So I don't, I can see it here with the naked eye. I'm not sure you'll be able to see there, but there is a difference in the popping of the color, the shade of the color. Um, this one definitely, it's got better coverage and the color is just, just that little bit brighter. So that's why we always suggest under your bright colors, I use the gray basin blocker, under your paler colors, um, I use the white. And it cuts down the amount of coats you need and um, just gives, gives the silk finish something really, um, a good base to grip onto. Unlike chalk paint, which grips to anything, silk paint's just that little bit different. So. You've kind of, you've got a top coat chalk paint, but you don't have to undercoat. You have to undercoat silk paint, but you don't have to top coat. So it's same really, just depending on what, what sort of you prefer doing. So I will show you how I prep before I paint. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do the iron on met method for the decoupage. So basically I've just got a bowl of hot water and that has just one pump of our um, lemon myrtle cleaner. I haven't, I didn't pick it up, but um, I'll get a bottle later on and show you. It's a liquid form um, furniture and brush cleaner. And so just, I just, oh, I didn't even do a whole pump. I just did like half a pump because it's only a small um, bowl. So all I do is just get wet my chucks and it's, you can feel the soapiness of it. This is great for um, greasy surfaces as well. Oh, here you go, thanks, Iana. So that's our lemon myrtle cleaner. It smells amazing. I love lemon myrtle, it's one of my favorite scents. So basically on this, it's got a few little speckles and a couple of drips there. So I just give it a really good clean. If it's got any, um, you know, details and corners. I really try and get into those. If it's something, you know, that has been, you know, left on um, a deck or outside, um, I just get one of those green scourer pads and use that as well to try and get any ground in dirt. If it's something that's just absolutely hideously grotty. And I just give it a wipe, make sure I've removed any little bits that I can see. And then I just get, oops, I knew I'd do that and spill water. <laughs> as soon as I put the bowl down earlier, I'm going, so going to spill that. <laughs> and this has just got um, just a damp cloth, just with warm water. And then I wipe it off. Just getting rid of any of that soapy residue you might have. And that's it. All done. Just dry this off. Normally I would leave it to dry on its own, but obviously you don't want to just sit there watching a drawer dry. <laughs> That's a bit boring. <laughs> okay, so just double check you've got any of the marks that you could see earlier off. So, so I'm using our grey base and blocker underneath. And I'm just going to, um, I know the paper has a white background, but I wanted to sort of deepen the pinks in the paper a bit. So I'm choosing to do pink underneath, but normally if you have um, a paper that has like a whitish background, try and use a white or a pale color underneath because it will show up better over that than it will on the wood itself. So. Has anyone seen the picture of the four new neutrals yet? Anyone, um, what's your favorite? Who's, do you like them? Do you hate them? <laughs> so I'm just applying a coat of the gray basin blocker. Just make sure I get in all those cracks. Any questions, Arnie? No, none so far. Oh, good. Oh, well, that's not good. I like answering questions. <laughs> I 
we've been so excited the last few days Ianna and I have been pouring all of the new colors and every time we open a new tub we're like oh I think this is our favorite and then we get to the next color no I think this one's my favorite oh my god no <laughs> this one's my favorite every single it's one so funny it's just hilarious So I just smooth off, I lay the paint down and then I just smooth it off. Okay, so that's the grey basin blocker. And I'll pop that aside there. So what I'll do is this one that I actually did um, use the basin blocker with, I'll do our yeah, second coat. So with... Um, your silk finish paint it's kind of opposite to um, how you would paint with a chalk finish um, because it has um, self leveling properties and sort of smooths out I just nearly bit my tongue then <laughs> um, you need to kind of have a little bit more loaded up onto your brush so I'll show you how much I load up so basically I try not to use my brush too wet with the silk finish either. So I kind of dip it in and that's how much I actually have quite a bit on my brush there. Um, and what I do is I lay my paint on first and then I go back and smooth off. So it's this, the good thing about this paint is that it actually has um, quite a bit of um, work time, which is the amount of time you have before the paint starts drying. That's basically what that means. So I just lay it down and then I'm smoothing it off. And if you just wait a little second more, you'll be able to do it again and you'll, you'll notice that it does get even smoother once you give it another go. I'm just gonna get all these edges. So this paint, um, this Protea is a white base so you shouldn't have any issues with coverage. Not like the clear base. There's only two of the new colors that are clear base. And um, so that's not too bad. So now that um, I've got the piece covered with my paint, I get off, I just wipe off any excess and then I just smooth over again. I'm not sure, oh, it's a bit hard to see. Um, but I can see that it's smoothed it off so much better. So I just give it like that little minute. And um, obviously you don't have to wait. If you've got a big piece, by the time you've sort of done, you know, half your section, you could go back then. You don't have to sit and wait for it. But this is how I get a, a super smooth finish. Um, and this paint basically does the work for you. Okay, so next I might move this one out of the way next I will start doing the decoupage so this is the one that I've just got one coat on so that's all I want um, underneath the decoupage and today I'm going to be using our matte sealer this is just my one with no label um, but you can use, for any sort of decoupage, you can use our matte, uh, satin, eggshell, gloss. Um, the gloss and the eggshell as well, because they've got a little bit, um, they're a bit more sticky um, as a top coat. You can actually use those to put, stick your wallpaper, your paintable wallpaper down as well. So, oh, this can be fun with my nails you today to yeah you might have to open it for me <laughs> <laughs> i so desperately need my nails done and then lockdown happened so uh -oh. i've ordered myself a tool so i can do them myself <laughs> oh no it's not coming off very good oh that's all right oh i better get another brush as well thank you darling i might just grab a brush
Everyone's loving the four new colours we released this morning. Oh, that's good. Oh, and the good. Protea, little sneak peek. <laughs> yeah, it's a really pretty pink. I'll show you, uh, where is it? So that's the new Protea. And if you want a comparison to the petal and the um, blush, so it sort of sits between the blush and the petal that we already have. It looks so different on camera. Does it? <laughs> it's it's crazy, crazy, isn't it? Well, I can see the difference like in the two looks cameras. Like blush orange. Oh, pop them down there. Yeah, so... It, yeah, it is. It's it's a really pretty, um, what do you call it? Like it's not too light, it's not too dark. It's um, it's a really nice, mm. a nice pink. I can pretty much pick which of my stockists will love this colour. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so basically I've got the matte sealer. And what I do, I've got the biggest brush in the world trying to fit into the smallest <laughs> tub. <laughs> is I just, again, like last week lay down the sealer or whatever sealer I'm using this is the matte sealer okay so I've just done a coat I'm not having fun with the light today a coat of sealer on there and I'm just going to you I've got a little bit on that side section that I don't want there. Yeah, you've got some on this front bit too. Yeah, I might just scratch the paint off too. <laughs> this is the one that hasn't got the base coat and it's, the paint's just sort of falling off it. Yeah. Okay, so I've just wiped off all the excess um, matte sealer and while that's drying for a little bit I'll plug my iron in. Seriously, I've probably used this three times in my whole life. Might just have to stay at the shed because it'll get more use here. <laughs> I don't iron anything. <laughs> I don't, don't go anywhere to wear nice clothes anymore to <laughs> iron anything. Okay, better move my coffee over there. Right. So now I've got to decide what drawer is this number? Three. So this is the bottom drawer. Okay. So I think it's got this. Um, oh, I better turn the steam off. Last time I used my iron, I made. Bamboo. <laughs> what did I make? Um, beeswax wraps. Yes. <laughs> the beeswax is all steaming off it. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Look. <laughs> oh dear. Comedy of errors. <laughs> right, let's turn the um, steam off. Yep. Right, so I think I want the bumblebee in the middle. So I might use up some of this flower here and then some of that flower can go on the top. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so I think cut a big amount so that I can actually fiddle around with dry so you need to let the um, sealer on top dry before you put on your piece just make sure I've cut enough off <laughs> might just grab the heat gun and dry that off a bit turn my oh, beeswax iron off <laughs> oh I'm hilarious seriously 
<laughs> Sometimes. Someone commented, your lives are awesome. Always get a laugh. <laughs> Oh, I feel like I'm like the muddle-headed wombat half the time. <laughs> Too much going on in this brain. <laughs> oh, now hubby's even commenting. <laughs> if you haven't got a heat gun, oh my goodness, this is this I use it. We use it every day, don't yeah, we? Like four times a day. Yeah. Oh, I would so laugh if this doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You probably dried it too much. I probably dried it too much, yeah, no. So normally I would leave that sort of for about half an hour or so. So this is all I do. <laughs> right, so I kind of want, I want to have like some of that green but, I'm a bit, uh, but I really want yeah I think I'll go lower so I'm getting the picture kind of like there so it's just going to chop off a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom and capture a little bit of the scrolls and fonts there okay so all you do is you press your piece down don't forget your baking paper. I nearly forgot that <laughs> today. Okay. And I just place the baking paper over the top. Make sure it's all smoothed out. Okay. And grab my beeswaxed iron. <laughs> And you just simply hold your iron over. I keep moving it. Um, I know some people sort of sit it in one spot. Oh, I've got two layers there. And you don't use any steam. Make sure your steam is turned off because um, you just make everything sweat. So again, you can use any of our sealers to do this method. There we go. So that's stuck, stuck down. Yay! Oh my God, it actually worked! worked. <laughs> and instead of sanding like I did last week, I'll actually just use a um, sharp knife because I've got these really easy, nice straight edges to work on. Just going to turn the iron off before I like <laughs> swing my hand and burn my fingers off because that's quite possible. Okay, right, move it out the way, and I just run, stick my knife at the edge and run it along the side of the drawer. I don't know if you can see that. You can see if you put, push your uh, finger along, you can get like a nice clean um, line that you can sort of follow. Oop, but I thought, oh, I'm going to rip this, I betcha. You probably picked the dullest knife. I probably picked the hours. dullest knife. I actually just there bought another one. things for them. There we go. Oh yeah, right. This, this. Oh, I'm so awesome at this. Being neat and tidy. Yeah, no, I'm not neat and tidy. You know that. Okay. Angela asks, "What's the minimum time you can leave the paint to dry before you put that clear coat on before the decoupage?" Ah, uh, minimum. I would. It would be depend on the climate where you are. Uh, I seriously painted this what ten minutes ten minutes before the live. Um, did but use I a heat gun did to use dry a it. heat gun. I would I would say half an half an hour. 
Yeah, I mean, if you're doing a whole um, piece, by the time you've sort of finished your first coat, you can most of the time go back and do your next coat. Um, it just all depends on, yeah, I've got the bluntest knife in history of man's. Do you want to try this one? That's all right. I'll just get the sandpaper and do it. I like the sandpaper anyway, and it will suit this because it's kind of that shabby chic sort of paper. Yeah, I think that's much oh, yeah, nicer. That. It's beautiful. I really like them. Um, sanded edge. It kind of feathers it a little bit, I reckon. A little bit there. Come on, mate. You want to get off? Yeah. Okay. It looks nice with the pink. Yeah, it's really nice. At that edge. Now this is a um, probably I think most people's preferred method because straight away you're not like looking at it and hoping that the wrinkles will disappear like um, last week when you paint it on you put it on on wet um, and it sort of crinkles up and you're like is it gonna stay there but it you know it does, does go away once it dries but this one has like an instant result so um, that makes a difference um, so from here you can wax over it you can do any of our sealers um, what else can you do you could even hemp oil if you wanted to but I don't think that would look really great I think it would unevenly sort of sit in the paper a little bit but you know depending on the paper if you were doing something really sort of grungy and industrial and you and you that sort of oily hemp oil look might look amazing. So, um, yeah, so that's the iron on method all done. It's pretty easy. Uh, I, I don't mind either method. I, I just think um, depends what I'm up to. Sometimes I can't be bothered waiting for the paper to dry. <laughs> they dry. Um, but yeah, that's the iron on method. So now I will show you. Um, the new colours, the four new neutrals that we released this morning. Do you give you a look? look? Look at the boards. Um, yeah, just one of gum nut macadamia, iron bark, and sugar cane. So I just want to do some um, comparisons for you um, with the new four neutrals that we have compared to our current neutrals. So that you get an idea what they might look like if you've used the other paint, the other colours. Okay, so the first one is macadamia. I might actually come around the front so I'm a bit closer and you can see them better. Okay, so let's move all this out of the way. I just dropped something. Oh well. Anyway, so this is macadamia. So this one is a really soft grey. So it's got that slight beigey sort of tone. Um, it's it's also got that sort of um, it's like a really soft grey but with a, a beigey tone in it. I'm in my head, and it sounds silly, but in my head, um, trying to think of something that is the colour of this, like bone. You know the colour bone, like if everyone sort of associates with your bones sort of thing. That's kind of to me what it looks like. It's got a slight grey, but it's still got a little bit of warmth in it. It's not like a cool grey. So this is it 
next to mist. So you can kind of see, sorry, my hands aren't quite big enough. So you can kind of see that it's war it's along the same depth of colour as mist, but it's got that warmth to it. So that's why I sort of um, call it a grage sort of thing. So hopefully you can see, I don't know, it's hard to tell, but if you like mist, you're gonna you're gonna love macadamia. It's got it, there's that little touch of warmth in it. Okay. You've got the thing goes here. Mm -hmm. Pasta, yeah short, but... okay yeah so that's the macadamia brushed out next to the mist see it's, 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 it looks so the same on the camera but it's so not yeah mist to, when you brush it out it'll look whiter and grayer than this okay uh next is gum nut so this is for me i think it's like a really true beige without having that heavy sort of yellowish tone like the calico does so that's it next to calico so you can see it hasn't got as much yellow and again along the same um, depth of color lightness as your calico but just that little bit i think more true true beige uh, for me calico is a bit like a um dark cream sort of thing okay next is sugar cane um, this looks very much like gum nut but it has a green undertone so you can see there next to fossil so same depth of color as the fossil if you like the fossil you'll love this one this is like I imagine it's just kind of like you've got your um, say seashell and you've added like three drops of myrtle it's like that it's really lovely it'll come up really nice and and um light and soft so that's the sugar cane and the iron bark so this is another um this is our sort of warm gray it's got no blue in it so those of you who find that the engine is a bit blue um see there it's it's cut out that blue um, it's our really nice um, just a light warm gray so hopefully you like those um, got heaps of options um, instead of having to paint white <laughs> which will still look nice um, when you um, have people that want white and you just try and sway them to something else um, so, I don't know, so, oh I've actually got one more color Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I have to lean over here. This one we're not releasing till what, 1 p.m.? No, yeah, this one won't be shown till 1 p.m. This is Fern. So it is, oh, like rainforest, like, I don't know. I, it's really beautiful. This was suggested by one of our stockers. Um, who also stocks fusion and they all missed out on the fusion jenny's green she's like can you please 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 make um something like that so i just googled <laughs> as many colors as i could and this is what we came up with so it's it's oh it's so beautiful in real life um this is it next to forest so forest you can see is a bit lighter and more olivey um, and this is it against myrtle I've got to shake that up a little bit so um, lots of people who love the myrtle I think will like this um, yeah it's really really lovely it's oh, we don't have one oh, there yeah. painted out um, but yeah so this is our new fern this is the only sort of bright colour in the, oh, no, maybe oh, sunset. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's our fern. Hopefully you'll enjoy checking out all the new colours. Um, we're packing orders all day yesterday and all day today and the next and the next probably. <laughs> um, so your stockists 
um, we'll have them available this afternoon for pre-order and they should only be a, a couple of days away from your stockist. A lot of them were posted yesterday, majority of them were posted yesterday and Monday. So probably just got about, oh, I don't know, I think we've got about 15 more <laughs> orders to get out. So we're trying our best to get them out as fast as possible. So hopefully by um, some of you by the weekend, if you can visit your stockists um, or, you know, if you're in lockdown like us and you're just waiting on everything posting, it'll probably be, you know, next week sometime. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Um, I have contacted um, Claire from, um, oh, what's Claire's? Restyled. Restyled by Claire, won our two wax brushes that we were giving away from last week for sharing this video. So if you would like to share this video today, you can win a fern and a, where is it? And a protea, the, the two colors that um, haven't been released yet until this afternoon. So share away and we'll draw them and announce it next week. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I think next week we're going to do some stenciling. Okay, see you later everyone. And thank look out you. for the new colors the rest oh, of yeah, today. Oh yeah, look out on the page, the new colors. There's some more coming at 12 and then at one. Okay, thanks so much. Bye.